Hey everybody, this is Brian from PMB Homesteading. This video is a little bit late because you may be able to tell my voice is a little uh, deeper because I got a little congestion. I think I picked up some kind of flu bug. So, so this weekend I was pretty much down for the count and I've been working from home this week because I don't want to spread this to anybody. But I thought I'd just show you some quick stuff that I did get accomplished this weekend. Okay, so I did get the uh, sweet potato slips. I got those put into the trash can uh, grow barrels. You can see they're in here and they're starting to come back. So they look pretty good. You can see there's some new growth coming out of the slips. Right there and there. And I believe these are the, uh, the Japanese purples. And these here are the, uh, the Georgia variant. So, and then we've got another one over there. Here's the other can I was talking about last week that I've kind of hit into the woods. And this is another one of the cans. And then when they start to grow, they'll they'll vine over the side, so we won't have to look at the, uh, the can. And I think next year I may actually take some uh, like camouflage paint, like a, uh, a dark green, and I'll probably just spray paint these cans. That way they'll blend into the clover and stuff like that a little better. It won't be such an eyesore and Paula won't get mad. This is one of the wildflowers that came up this year. It's kind of cool looking. Yeah, that's over my head. I'm six feet, so I think probably about six and a half feet tall. Got some nice pink blooms. Hummingbirds seem to really like it. And we can show you the propagation bed real quick. The lavender seems to be doing pretty well. I've lost a few of them. I put the ones that I didn't know if they were going to be, you know, survivors out here on the edge. And, I've noticed, and you may notice that it's kind of zigzaggy. And I noticed last year that with the sun profile that comes through here, the ones in the back back here always died off. So I figured I'd put the sacrificial ones in the back row. But they seem to be doing pretty well. And if I get half of these to survive, that's going to be a heck of a lot of lavender that I'm going to have planted throughout the yard. I mean, we already have a lot of it here, but they'll be even more. And then these are the, uh, the azaleas. They seem to be doing pretty well. I mean, even the little guy that was bent over, he's still, he's still uh, kicking along. So hopefully I can get those to survive, because those will be a really nice pop of color early in the spring throughout the little backyard we got here. Gala apple's doing pretty well. And then we got the, we got the leaf, leaf scab you know, on our tree, but the, overall the tree's really healthy. Apples look pretty nice. You know, pretty good size now. You can see that's a pretty good size one there. This is the first year we've actually got a lot of apples on this tree, so we're pretty excited to have those. We'll uh, go back here and show you the, our grapes and our kiwi. We're starting to... This is the kiwi. And this is our grape. And then those are the sunflowers I showed you guys that I planted. They're doing really well back here. So, that's looking nice. I mean, the grapes are just going crazy on that one there. I'm going to have to wrap those around the, the lines here. I'm going to have to put some kind of a brace on this. As it gets heavier with these kiwi vines, it might start to pull that inward. But the nice thing about these kiwi vines is when they get older, they get hard. And then they turn into like a really fibrous vine. And as they get bigger and thicker, they're going to actually hold these posts in place. I mean, they're, they're pretty stiff. So they don't really have to rely on the, the wire to hold them. Let's see, I'll go this way. This is supposed to be a quick update, Brian. Come on, man. Start moving. <laughs> Let's see. I'll go back here and show you the new uh, trellis I put in for the cucumbers along our fence. And hopefully it's going to work. Because it gets pretty hot back here, and I noticed that some of the leaves got a little bit burned on the tips for these cucumbers. But anyway, that's one of our bamboo poles. From our golden bamboo that we have on the side of our deck back over that way you can see it poking up so when they get old and die I cut them down i strip them and i'm going to use them to do trellises like this throughout the yard and i just took a little bit of netting hung it on there some wire put it over the fence and then just some pieces of wood laced in between i thought about putting another bamboo rod in the bottom down there but then I thought, you know, that's a waste of a bamboo rod. When I could just use a piece of these kindling that we've got, you know, from trees we've cut and branches that have fallen off the trees and have that hold it down. 
And then these, I believe, are the uh, the gherkins. They seem to be doing pretty well here, because you know, I do have the, the sprinkler right there. So when it turns, it goes all the way and shoots up along the fence. Gives them some water. So they look like they're doing pretty well. And then, of course, I had to put a little, uh, you know, dog pug barrier here, because our one dog, Edgar, he loves to chase squirrels, and he runs down this path along the fence. And I didn't want him to tear out the cucumbers by slamming into them. So I figure, you know, he can bounce off the rope there. But, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, and I planted the currants. One more thing after that to show you. You can see the scarlet runner beans are really starting to go up the, uh, the bean hutches now. The tomatoes are looking good in this back box. There's some more of our little bird friends, Robin. You can see the squash is doing really well in the garden boxes there. Here's where I put some new currant bushes. These are the ones that I propagated last year, some of that crop that I had in the propagation bed. So I put one around each of these trees. This is our honeyberry bush. We never seem to get any honeyberries off these because the birds come and take them too soon and yeah, that's okay. There's another current there. And there. And there's two more over here. I put the smaller ones over here because it's a little less crowded. And I'll put the taller ones back here because this uh, pink bell hummingbird bush has really taken off over the last year. I mean, it's just gotten huge. So I wanted to give it a pretty good shot at uh, having the taller currents back here. I have to come by and kind of pull some of this out of the way and make sure they get some sun. Yeah, I put the tallest of my currents back there, so it should be pretty nice. I mean, it's already got side shoots coming off of it. And that's only a one-year-old current. I mean, I started that out with a cutting that was that big, that big in the... Uh, propagation bed last year. These are my Asian pears. I sure up potted those. I think I showed you guys that in one of the videos. But uh, I mean they're getting big and I mean I had to put that one in a big huge pot because its taproot was oh geez probably about that long and the old pots. So. There's some variegated gala. Here's some sunflowers I put all around here. Looks like they're taking off pretty well on the back there. A couple of them here. This one's in the front. Yeah, they're okay. <clears throat> down here and show you some more stuff that I put into the uh, trellis down here because the beans and the peas are starting to grow up on the one side. And I decided to put the other cucumbers on the back side there. You can see how big they've gotten. So they're they're starting to grab onto the trellis and vine. And on the other side we've got the uh, Montesino beans and the peas. You can see here's the, the peas are growing and latching on and here's some the Montesino green beans. They're growing up and getting on there. A lot of those got wiped out by the uh, birds. For some reason they just came through there and they started pulling out the dang green beans. It's like they're little craps. It's like that's supposed to be food for me. Other than that, oh, and then we still got the punakira. Those are the, uh, the Indian green uh, cucumbers. I didn't have anywhere to put those yet. And then one of them got eaten by a slug. So there's still two, there's two in two of those pots. So I got a total of six still. But I haven't figured out where I'm gonna put those. I thought about taking those and putting them up there with the other cucumbers. But then uh, we've got all those marigolds underneath the house. And I thought, well, I could plant marigolds over there. It would look kind of cool having that uh, flowery base and then we'll have the cucumbers on the top. And then I thought about maybe even putting some scarlet runner beans over there. So that way we'd have the, the bright red along with the yellow of the cucumbers. And then the uh, down on the bottom have the orange color of the, uh, the dark orange marigold. So I thought that'd be kind of neat. Gives Paula something to really look at and have a nice view from her kitchen window back up there. But that's kind of the, the kind of the yard right now. I mean, you know, we're getting squash every day. I mean, we're taking squash out of here. We've got the, uh, the eggplants. Here's some of the snowy eggplant. I mean, we got 
one on there ready to harvest. There's another one back there that's going to be ready. Uh, over here, we've got, I believe, two that we could harvest now. There's one down there, another one over there. And there's a couple Michael left ones that are almost ready for another harvest. But, you know, I mean, we've got tons of squash just growing everywhere right now. So the yellows are really kicking in. And we've got a couple of zucchini in the upper box that need to be harvested for this weekend. And Paula got her, uh, her zoodle maker. So we make the zucchini noodles with her little spiral cut device. We tried that on a gray griller, but the gray grillers, they're so soft that uh, it just kind of made mush. <laughs> so, so we're gonna end up having to uh, just do the uh, gray grillers, like just slicing them and putting them on the barbecue like we did last year. And then uh, we'll just use the zucchinis. And I don't know if the yellows will actually work on there because there's also a softer squash. So they may actually not work out too well. But you can see that uh, we've got some nasturtium here. These are really good. I mean, you just pick it off and just eat it. And they got a really great peppery taste. So, I mean, if you can get some nasturtium seed, and the great thing about these things is they'll reseed themselves every year because they drop off their seeds. They're about that big, you can collect them if you want. I just let them drop and they just keep going. I mean, that is a really good thing to put on a salad. You don't even need pepper if you put those on. And the leaves also have a peppery taste. So you can eat these leaves as well as the flower head themselves. The flower heads are really pungent with the peppery taste. So we go in like we, we've already had a couple salads this week where we picked off some of these nasturtium and threw them inside our salad. So, and remember a little bit goes a long way in that. If you put a whole handful of those in there, you're, you're gonna be uh, grabbing a glass of water every time you take a bite. So yeah, there's more squash down there. This eggplant's got a little informing on that one. We already harvested off that one once. There's some more nasturtium back there. Oh, and we have a new little friend that's coming to our yard. Something we've never had here on the urban homestead, besides having the, uh, the garter snakes that are really taking off now in the yard, we also got a uh, little rabbit. We saw him uh, this weekend. We were sitting on the deck having a glass of wine and uh, little bunny rabbits. I think there was two of them. They were zipping around underneath the bird bath. And I think they may have actually started a burrow and make a little house down inside this bed here. So we're gonna see if they become an issue. I may have to like uh, plant something that they're gonna eat besides our, our vegetables we want. I mean, I could do some sacrificial uh, cabbage or maybe some, uh, some lettuce. I could bring up lettuce trays. That's one thing I could do. Those old lettuce trays that I have inside the grow tents, instead of toss them in the compost heap, I'll just take them out here, put them in the beds, and maybe they'll just nibble on that. Because we did notice there was a couple of little teeth marks on a couple of the zucchini. They didn't really munch into it, because I don't think they liked the zucchini, but I think they tested it with their teeth. Because it had like the little rabbit looking teeth, the kind of two little teeth looked like that. All right, guys, I'm gonna head back in. Get some rest because holy cow. <laughs> Alright, I'll talk to you guys again. Bye.